for instance, with cellular automata. This induced me to apply, to apply this idea to theoretical physics. I developed some ideas concerning the Rechner der Raum, meaning something like calculating cosmos. This general idea is of increasing interest in other places too, for instance, in the United States. I am convinced that such investigations will gain broader attendance in the future also for the physicists. But both of these ideas are as crazy today as the idea of the computer was 30 to 40 years ago. Therefore, it is my fate to perform these investigations on a very limited scale. Nevertheless, I feel happy to be a pioneer until the end of my days. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, as to the discussion, may I beg you to speak loud, slow, and distinctly because of my bad ears. Uh, Estrin, UCLA. Uh, there are two questions which I think may have very short responses. One of the questions is, did you ever discover any reasons that during World War II that the government gave for rejecting your plan for development of electronic computers? Was it possibly the reason that they were afraid of the devil? The second short question is, and this really has to do also with another example of uh, good and evil use of our products, uh, were the computers ever used in uh, implementing the plan <coughs> of the final solution for the, the destruction of the Jews? What? Oh, excuse me, I didn't get, get. The first question was why did not the German government approve your plan for computing? No, no, that's not right. No, well, uh, uh, concerning the electronic solution, uh, the, uh, the, during the war, German authorities sponsored the electromechanical development. And uh, they sponsored the uh, test work of Schreier to make small test models. But we had difficulties to convince them that we can take a whole machine uh, in uh, electronic uh, technology. And uh, we ourselves we are not quite convinced that with uh, limited resources uh, we had in Germany, Germany it, uh, we would really have succeeded with this project. There were, was interest, but uh, uh, you see, the, all the philosophy in Germany they was not uh, not based very much on, on theoretical work. Yes, uh, uh, they, uh, the, 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 we engineers and scientists, we had to make things we could put on the head of the of the enemy to that time. Yes, and uh, when the, anyone came, yes, we, we must uh, make uh, uh, research work, a very far-sighted research work, there was not much interest. Is it uh, the answer for this? And the second question was? <coughs> Wie weit haben Ihre, Ihre, Ihre Arbeiten in der Flugzeugindustrie zu praktischen, äh, zu praktischen Konsequenzen im Krieg geführt? Well, you ask uh, what, uh, what practical consequences my, uh, my uh, inventions or uh, machines had on the air, uh, aircraft industry. At first, the numerical, no, is it so? On, on the, was it so right? No, this was a very direct, simple question. It was just as an example of good and evil use of computers, that in Germany during World War II were computers ever used in implementing the final solution for the destruction of the Jewish people. Oh. Deutschland eingesetzt in, in, bei der endgültigen Zerstörung der jüdischen Bevölkerung. Der, 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 der jüdischen Bevölkerung. No, that's not at all. That's the answer. I can answer perfectly clear. Yes. Um, James Tuttle, Salamis. I see almost every uh, great uh, um, computer pioneer turned his mind to chess. Uh, we did it here. 
and I see the Russians have a program and you have one, it was not at all clear whether your program was ever... A it was not at all clear to me whether your program was ever applied, uh, put, put on a computer and tried. Um, the thing that's very characteristic of any chess program is how is the situation, how far is the chain extended, the, brand, the tree, and how is the quality of the situation assessed? It was not clear to me how you did that. Well, uh, did your chess program ever work? Or was no. It ever run? The, the chess program never. I, I, uh, truly. I told you. The program was never on a machine. It was on a chess program. The chess program. Well, I told you that uh, this uh, development of the plan calcul was purely theoretical. There never was an implementation and a compiler for the plan calcul, and it was only on paper. <clears throat> Earlier in the conference, we heard some dissatisfaction with calling uh, the stored program machine a von Neumann machine. I wonder, in view of your characterization of the advantages and disadvantages and the possibility that it might be a pact with the devil, if you would suggest the alternative of calling it the Faustian machine. Well, can you help me, Mr. Ball? Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Um, Bigelow of Princeton, I think in connection with the use of the cliché stored program machine, we have one of our deepest examples of where the English language needs clarification and purification in order for one computer historian, say, to talk effectively to another or to talk to posterity. In a certain sense, it is difficult to say what you mean or what you can properly infer from looking at a stored program machine, what it was actually intended to do and what the thinking processes of its designer included, as it would be to look at a musical instrument, say like a violin, and be able to conceive all of the kinds of concerti and music which could be written for it. I think we must watch out carefully in substituting the object which has certain properties for the properties themselves. It's my personal opinion that von Neumann understood what the stored program computer meant more than any other man at that time, and that this is the basis of his great contribution. I would like to emphasize the fact that throughout the history of science, as I've been able to understand it, and I'm not a historian, uh, uh, if you retroactively look at the ideas a given person had, particularly if he was a productive and resourceful and imaginative person, the span of his ideas are enormously wider and enormously richer than the span of the things that he actually did anything about. And it is not reasonable to say that because a certain person had some idea or did not have some idea that he was an originator. I think that most of us had many ideas which flew through our heads in various forms uh, which we formulated or documented or constructed to varying degrees, and that the art of doing uh, history in the computing field should not be underestimated, because what it means is that we must hew carefully to this very difficult problem of inference from the uh, objects which are now at hand, the artifacts which exist, the extent and the penetration of the processes for which they were appropriate. Well, may you help me with the bar? Power. Uh, with respect to that question about, uh, uh, about the actual use of Sousa's programs, most of the more complicated programs written in the Blanc Calcul have been recoded by us and have been tested and have worked on the machines. Of course, there were certain trivial misprints and other minor errors that could be easily corrected. Now, with respect to chess, probably you misunderstood something. The chess program Susie was speaking about 
for the program for proving correctness of chess moves. And it was not a program for playing chess. It would have been another application, and certainly it wouldn't have been much more difficult to write a chess playing program. But I think the example given here for the structure of the Planck calcul is very well demonstrated just by the problem of chess moves. Just chess is a good example for a very complicated data structure which has to be investigated. So the question to the respect whether this chess program would have been a good chess program or not is not applicable. To make another short remark about the Z4, which was working later in Zurich, the machine was quite reliable, worked unattended during night, and people used to say, the only nightlife in Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> One more question from back there. <clears throat> Uh, Trop of California. I just wanted to uh, restate what Professor Bigelow just said. <clears throat> Since Ken May isn't here, I think we have to separate uh, the one thing which we can never know, and that's when people first thought of things, from when ideas began to appear and how they circulated and how uh, ideas were communicated either through publications or through uh, internal discussions. Uh, the question of when something was first thought of is something that will never be settled. Well, thank you very much, uh, Conrad Zissi. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for that.